You see, the Independence Post Office was transformed into a soda shop to draw attention to the fact that the new rock and roll rhythm and blues stamps are now available in sheets of 35 or books of 20. Was Don worried about making his singing debut at the post office? I look forward to it. I could hardly sleep last night. Is that a song? I couldn't sleep last night. The post office customers were thrilled. They were dancing in the aisles. This is fantastic. A treat for me. I love to dance rock and roll. The Postal Service is also offering a special commemorative set with a rock and roll CD for $29.95. Of course, listening to Don and the oldies was free. <laughs> Maybe beside me at the wheel. I'll tell you what, if he needs a manager, I'm going to leave the post office and be his personal manager. You worked here all these years, no one even noticed you. Well, you know, stars are born every day. <laughs> I just haven't been discovered yet, that's all. He's perfect for the job. We auditioned quite a few people, he wanted hands down. You know, all of this has been great fun, but I have a little bit of a problem with those stamps. Uh, Don, that uh, Richie Valen stamp, it yeah. doesn't look like him. Who's he look like? I think he looks like Bill Clinton. Uh, you may be right. It doesn't look like that guy. Yeah? Bill Clinton. Who's Bill Clinton? Look out, Don. Bill Clinton could fire you, and then you would have... No particular place to go. Gary Stromberg, New Center 8. <laughs> I think Don is the Chuck uh, Berry of the 90s. Huh? He's great. If you head out to Parmatown Mall, you may see some people carrying around little bundles of joy. New Center 8's Gary Stromberg says these little bundles may be cuddly, but don't expect them to necessarily be cute. You know, a lot of people have told me that my son looks just like me. I'm not so sure. What, what do you think? Actually, my real son has a much more youthful look. So who, or more appropriately, what is this? Well, it's a frighteningly lifelike doll made at the Just Photos booth at Parmatown Mall. Just what does it cost to get a doll like this for your very own? A $34.95. Uh, what do you think you can get for this Gary Stromberg doll here? This one here, probably worth a hundred. <laughs> at least a hundred. <laughs> Dollars or cents? No, now, some of the other people who have posed for these customized dolls are adults who ham it up for the camera. Even Dan Handa posed, and his turned out looking like Al Bundy from Married with Children. But when a baby poses for these baby dolls, the final product is actually kind of cute. Who buys these one-of-a-kind items? Anybody from uh, grandparents with the grandchildren on them to uh, people buying them for 40th and 50th birthdays, gag gifts anniversaries, anything, and just surprises for the relatives. Now, would babies like to latch on to something like the Gary Stromberg doll? doll? It's ugly. <laughs> it's a <like> looking doll. <laughs> I can't even look at it. Well, I'll admit it's not exactly a Cabbage Patch doll. I mean, the original photograph really is detailed. It really picks up a guy's whiskers. <laughs> yes, the five o'clock shadow. <laughs> <laughs> Does that add to the doll, do you think? Yes, I think so. <laughs> Makes it very unique. So if you want a doll like this, shave first and bring $34.95 to the Parmatown Mall. The whole procedure takes about a half hour. The investment of money and time could really pay off if a major toy company calls and says it wants to market your doll. So far, no one has called me. Gary Stromberg, New Center Inc. Oh, my. Maybe if they have a special sale. You could have fun with those. <laughs> Tell some cameramen they have to get a shot of corn growing, and they might let out a groan or two. But John Postian always looked at every task as a challenge, and in this case, he even took a stroll through the corn himself. John, or JP as he liked to be called, was a free spirit, his own man, but his work was always in sharp focus. Out in the field, I never heard him say, that should be enough. More often than not, he would say, let's get a few more shots, or let me try a different angle. With JP, you could always expect the unexpected. We did a story about Santa Claus last December. When we finished, JP made sure he posed for a Polaroid shot along with Santa. There were times for laughs and times for tragedy. John and I covered a story about a man who killed his father back in March. It was an unusual day. The temperature flirted with 70, a hint of summer, a summer JP would not be able to enjoy. A battle with cancer, a desperate try for a bone marrow transplant, 
a tragic death at age 37. The times I worked with JP, well, we went through thick and thin, whether it was thin ice or thick smoke. When we did a fire training story with the Hudson Fire Department, he made sure the lighting was just right. He even stayed inside the burning house a little longer than he should have to capture all of the drama. Now, JP wasn't perfect. He had an attitude problem of sorts. Many times I would come down to the cameraman's room and he was watching reruns of Bonanza on TV. I'd say, JP, we have a story. And he would reply, hey, Stromberg, I'm watching Bonanza. But after the obligatory 10-second pause, he would then stand up and give the story his full effort, his special artistic touch. John gave me a tape a few years ago by the group The Fabulous Thunderbirds. He loved to listen to the blues, but he never sang the blues. Despite losing his mother to cancer, his brother to cancer, and fighting a courageous battle himself, he didn't complain. He was a champion. When I think of JP, hundreds of visual images danced through my head. He was a guy who gave it his all, inspired others to do their best, and showed us the best way to enjoy life is by rising above the small stuff, ignoring the petty squabbles. JP, you had a zest for life. It's just not the same without you. group doesn't have the new stadium ready in time for the April 5th hole. If the Gateway group doesn't have the new stadium ready in time for the Indians opener, it will have to pay the Indians a penalty of $10 million. Doesn't have the Cavs to rehab thing. If the Gateway group doesn't have the new stadium ready in time for the Indians April 5th owner. Owner? <laughs> If the Gateway Group doesn't have the new stadium ready in time for the April 5th opener, it will have to pay the Indians a penalty of $10 million. If the new Uberuber... If the Gateway Group doesn't have the new stadium ready in time for the April 5th opener, it will have to pay the Indians a penalty of $10 million. If Gateway doesn't have the new arena ready for the Cavs opener, the penalty will range from $10 million all the way up to $25 million. 